everybody to Wall Street Reporters CEO Spotlight. Uh, today we are speaking with next super stock presenter, Alan Paul Silverstein. He is the CEO of Imagine AR. Stock symbol is IPNFF, over the counter, IP on the CSC. And uh, today we are doing a follow up to the recent uh, live stream presentation from last week, where we had, uh, I think we had almost a thousand people on that call. So it was a new record. Uh, and uh, Alan, uh, so welcome back, by the way. Absolutely. I always get to see you, Jack. Always having the opportunity to meet your investors and your group. And I thank you for this opportunity as well. Yeah, so, so Alan, we had, uh, you know, last week, with the, you know, the stock was on fire, uh, right, coming right off, of the, off that live stream. We had a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, audience and engagement. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, <laughs> let's address the elephant in the room. A, uh, you know, a, a website puts out a report, uh, basically bad mouthing the stock. Uh, you know, I, mean, I don't know if they were working with short sellers. Usually these guys kind of do work in partnership with short sellers. Uh, and you know, the stock has taken a big hit. Now it's stabilized a little bit. So, um, uh, so first, I, 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 I just want to tell you this, Alan, is, you know, we've seen this happen like twice in the last uh, six months with our next super stock presenters, you know, as the stocks have taken off. And um, uh, in both cases, this is back in February, uh, you know, two of the companies, I mean, anybody following our, our program knows who these companies are. Uh, and uh, the shorts came out back in, I think, in February. The stocks dropped, you know, about 50%. You know, obviously what these guys do is, uh, you know, first they, they build a short position. <laughs> then they put out the report, you know, you know, which basically slanders the company, they just throw mud and then the stock drops, people panic, they cover, they move on to the next day. Uh, since then, both, both stocks have increased, uh, I don't know, 500% higher than they were at the peak before the shorts. So you're in a good position. Well, thank you very much. As I've said, I've said, you know, I made a statement. What we had to say as a company, I have nothing further to say at this point. I'm not giving any recognition uh, to it. It's a, it's a disappointment what happened to stockholders who invest their hard earned money and spend their time doing due diligence into a company. But I assure you, Jack, going forward, and as we continue even this week, we're much stronger than we were last week. And I'm extraordinarily confident, even more so, from a lot of the sales, activities, the demos, the conversations that have occurred all along this week. So we'll move on. If you want to include the statement we made, feel free to insert it into this video. But I really want to focus on the business and a lot of the questions we had left from last time and assure investors we're here to stay. We're here to grow. We're here to build a significant business as the only AR pure play available today in the marketplace in North America. Alan, uh uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about the future of the company and everything that's happening and, you know, the, the massive cash position you're sitting, which, you know, gives you the ammunition, the fuel, you have to fund that growth. But, you know, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little bit fired up about <laughs> these types of short attacks. I want to add a couple of things. First of all, okay. uh, any investors watching this, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a free markets guy. I believe in, you know, short selling, you know, you know efficient markets. It's great. But look, there, there's really two types of, you know, professional short sales. There's, you know, somebody who actually puts out a report based on a company. Okay, company is a fraud. You know, there's accounting fraud. There's, you know, the products, you know, whatever fraud there is. And that, that's a legitimate type of, you know, short sale. It's like a Jim Chano. So you have a, a couple of guys at the very high end. Then you have kind of these uh, sort of like, uh, 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 kind of like amateur hour guys who, you know, they, they, they don't really understand a business. They don't have anything to, you know, they don't have any case to make a get to make uh, against the stock from an, any financial standpoint. There's no, there's no real fundamentals. There's no, there's nothing of substance. So they, they're able to make allegations. Oh, the company, the product is not ready yet. Oh, this, the guy did this last year, did this, whatever it is. Yeah. There's never any substance to it. Uh, and, and those types of things, you know, which we've seen happen again and again with, with some of the companies we work with. And these guys do it. This is, this happens all the time. So, you know, people panic, the stock, uh, you know, uh, comes back. And, you know, one thing I do want to add, I, I did look at that report. Uh, and, you know, this is what, what kind of bothers me about this is, this is not a, even a professional short sale. What, what's, what's really uh, 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 kind of uh, 
what, sh what should I say is the word? Uh, I'm not going to use the word, what is it, troubling? Is that the word they say in the media? But here's a guy who's basically, this is not an independent journalist. This is a, you know, he's a paid stock promoter. He, he gets, this is a guy who gets paid by companies to, you know, write up stories about them. You know, a little bit about kind of like what we do. We don't write stories, but we give companies visibility, companies pay to be on our platform, get a massive audience. That's the business we're in. So we can't write negative stories about companies because that becomes, it's just, you know, we're just, not, that, it's a conflict of interest. If you're an independent journalist and you're getting paid by companies, like this guy is getting paid, you know, it becomes a form of extortion. So it's almost like, hey, uh, you know, if you don't pay me, we're going to write negative articles on you like we're doing on Imagine AR. That's really what it is. I mean, I have one more, one last sentence. You know, number one, do not take our silence as a sign of weakness or inaction. We can move on from that topic. Okay, Alan, let's let's move on. Let's move on to uh, bigger and, and better things. So, uh, I understand. My understanding is the company right now you're sitting in a pretty good cash position. We've done quite well. Yeah, Jack, we put out that warrant announcement that we raised over 1.5 million. And uh, I expect us to put another announcement out very shortly uh, in the very near future because uh, it's certainly going to owe my corporate secretary quite a number of vacation days because uh, she had been working night and day this entire week on warrant redemptions. We had an enormous pool of warrants sitting out there between the 25 and 30, 32 cent range. And uh, there's a lot of confidence in the investors, despite even the recent events. A lot of confidence in the company, the model, what we've recently announced in relationships. And yeah, we're, we're pretty well financed going through the year for sure, and then some. So we're pretty well covered, we're well positioned, we're gonna invest in the roadmap, we're gonna pick up further speed in some of the things we wanted to pursue, but it's certainly we do not need to go out and raise money anytime in 2020 for sure, if not beyond. Uh, Alan, what, one thing I, I want to add, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here, <laughs> but when it comes to these, uh, you know, these, these, these short sellers, you know, uh, it's very similar to what's happening with Tesla. You know, anybody following this company? Wow, well, you know, I appreciate <laughs> that, and I will take that analogy. But Jack, if you had so much to say, uh, someone had emailed me that, that the specific writer, and I really don't want to give that person any any recognition, anything, because there's nothing to even respond to, uh, sat on one of the stock boards for hours and hours. So uh, I, I find it amazing that somebody is so busy dealing and handling with their clients and their business and growing it, that once they, they do something like this, then they sit on stock boards uh, for hours and sit there and go back and forth with investors. Nothing I've ever heard about previously, but Jack, maybe you can log in. You could, you can have your own session one-on-one -on -one with that that individual. No, I, I, Alan, we, we we don't have time for this. But 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 back to the Tesla, because one thing it, which is which is interesting, you know, um, you know, Tesla is a company that's had short sellers, that had you know doubters, whatever. It is, because look, you know, the guy started basically a new, essentially a new industry, right? And you know, it takes time for things to gain traction. You know, when the first, when these electric cars came out, I think this was, I think I saw Tesla like in 2000, I've heard, of, I heard about them like 2007. Right. I saw one, I thought it was the goofiest thing ever. I thought this is like, I actually don't like the cars now. I think they're, they're goofy cars. I, I'd be embarrassed to own one. No one sold to anybody watching this if they have one. But uh, the company's been a tremendous success. I mean, this is like one Absolutely. of the biggest winners of all time. But this is a story that took, you know, what is it, 18 years to gain traction? I mean, up uh, we're not going to be at 18 on. years, but yeah, it right. takes a we're long not, time. I mean, <laughs> that's for sure. I, I know. I know that one of the issues that, that that especially investors in the micro cap space have is, you know, they're they're like addicts for news flow. Uh, <laughs> what is? When are you going to have news? When is this and that? When are you going to? Absolutely. Gonna close Absolutely. That deal? I mean, it's like, it's it's really like Tesla. I mean, it, it doesn't have. It's not a straight line. If you, when you're building this, a business uh, in a new industry. Uh, which we, again, and this is the AR space. What you're doing is really a uh, look. It's a brand. It's really a brand new. It's a brand new industry. It's kind of like uh, the internet in 1997, in 1996. Uh, if you call up a company, and say, hey, you guys want a website? What's a website? What? Who needs it? Right. You know, 
I think you have a fair point. When you go out as an AR company, most AR companies are VC sponsored and certainly pure play. So when you go out, we have done it by pivoting a public company that was primarily focused on content and movies. And it was a major pivot. And it took a while to get through that, to pivot out of that into a new technology where the market was just beginning. And a lot of people don't realize this market is relatively new. There's already been a number of you know, failures, I uh, say, or people have burned through enormous sums of money as the industry continues to grow. And we've made it this far. And that's, we want to remain that pure play, what do you want to say, the Tesla of AR, but the reality is we want to be that pure play. We could have gone out there and acquired another company that had revenue in some associated marketplace. But to me, that detracts from the focus, the message, and to be the leader in an industry. We are here to be the leader in AR. We're here to be the leader in mobile AR. And a lot of people, Jack, don't realize there's a big difference in variants of types of AR. There's AR that works on your computer, that's web AR, that only functions on the screen, 2D to 3D objects on the screen. We don't do that. Our AR is mobile phone based to be enjoyed and immersed anywhere in the world, anytime. There's 5 billion mobile phones out there and all of them can su support the AR enhanced features from both Apple and Android. And that's our focus. We're not gonna divert from our mission. We're focused on being the AR leader. It gives an opportunity, a once in a lifetime really, for investors who believe in AR. And you know, we've gone through the statistics by that company, DigiCapital, is probably the most respected AR VR analyst in the world, that they have the market today at four or five billion to grow to 48 billion in four years. We are focused in that niche, in that area. And you know, we're not gonna have news every day but we're building a substantial pipeline. We're having substantial companies that have just been approaching us. Even this week, it's just been nonstop night and day type of approaches, discussions and opportunities. And we're extraordinarily optimistic. As I said previous, the second half of 2020 is gonna be a landmark year for Imagine AR. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing you, you mentioned, you touched on was, you know, you know pivoting in business, pivoting strategies, we're, we're seeing this happen all the time with any company, any company in a fast growing space. Uh, and, and when it comes to micro caps, really, look, the reality is, uh, you know, as an investor, anybody looking at a micro cap, you're really buying into the CEO. It's the company, the story, all that stuff is great. But ultimately, you know, it's still, these are entrepreneurial companies. You're, you know, anybody who's looking at these stocks, you're really betting on the CEO. This is, this is what happens over and over again. So, and that's one of the reasons why we do these interviews, why we do the live stream presentations. You know, we don't, at Wall Street Reporter, we've never written an article about a company. We never, we just don't believe in writing articles because it's kind of subjective, whatever. Our whole goal is, hey, put the CEO in front of an audience, let them tell the story to a massive audience and, you know, let the people decide for themselves. So, and ask questions. Said, you know, Al, with that said, I think, you know, I think it's important for investors, yeah, they might be new to the story. I don't think we ever touch them, but, you know, you have a very interesting background. I actually, um, we crossed paths. I we never met before, like, you know, recently, but we actually technically, it was like, we crossed paths, like, uh, back in the 90s. Uh, I'm was, not that old. That's exactly <laughs> impossible. Maybe that was the augmented reality version. It was the, no, 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 I, I, well, I was, true. I was, um, I was, I was, uh, a, uh, I was doing some uh, 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 research reports for, for was it, uh, bro, uh, uh, whale securities, which was, uh, a uh, company. they took, you know, they took, you know, emerging growth companies public, they had some major winners, um, take two interactive, some huge, huge home runs. And we were after them. That's right, Jack. You're that's right. absolutely so, so, correct. So what's interesting, I don't know if I've ever told you. So No, you have not. Okay. So a guy who was, you know, one of the investment bankers there who was a, I kind of like a, met, I was like a kid, I was like 20, 22. He was a kind of a, a met, it was Harris Shapiro. And he, <laughs> he took you public. And he was, I remember, I remember I was in his office. I would sit in his office and he had all these phone that cards. That is pretty he, good. He had these phone cards and, he's, and he kept saying, this guy, Alan Paul, this guy's a genius. We're going to make a, four, this is going to be the <laughs> biggest thing. You know, Harris, what's interesting is he was really kind of like a, he was kind of like a Sheldon Inwitash. He's like a real visionary. He was on top of trends, like, you know, years ahead. I mean, yeah, he was into the cannabis stocks years. He, the guy was, so he thought this phone card thing is Alan Paul. This is you are be, cracking me guy. up. You remember that? And you, you know what? The people who brought us, and that is true. Yeah, we did work with them. And I got brought to Harris in particular by some pretty renowned individuals who actually, I, as you know, I partnered with Shelly Finkel, who's a Vander Hall field manager, Pernell Whitaker, Mike Tyson, and super successful not only in boxing, but in music. 
he was friends with two gentlemen. One was uh, Eli Oxenhorn, the other was uh, Barry Rubenstein. Everyone could look him up. They sold Cheyenne software for $2 billion to Computer Associates. And the three of them are the gentlemen who backed me back in the phone card days. And they wanted to go public. So they did know Harris. They connected into him and ultimately went public with those gentlemen who were backing us. So it's a small world. That was pretty funny. But yes, and, that and was back phone, to the days of GPS. And the phone, that, the, that phone card, the, the company you started, I mean, that was, you know, that stock was a hit. I remember, I know we were double the trade. We IPO'd at five. We IPO'd at five dollars US. It made up to 12 or 13. I was working much younger then, still 80, 100 hours a week, and, and same as I'm doing now, but, uh, and then kind of backed out of it and retired out of that for a while because it just, it was exhausting. And we grew from, you know, a small desktop office in the Pan Am building across the street from Grand Central. I shared an office with a, the a consultant who worked with the Brockman family and ultimately had 45 employees on Madison Avenue and 46th in Madison. And we IPO'd. So it was pretty exciting times back then. That, that's, uh, you bring up a smile. Uh, that was quite a time back then. That was real. No, but, but, but the reason I mentioned it also is the phone card thing. People don't even know what that is. I mean, they don't even know. What oh, people my are. God. My mom <laughs> used to yell at me when I went into phone cards. Back. What person is going to buy plastic phone cards? I used to wake up every day, take the train from Westchester, take a subway out to Jackson Heights and out to Queens, knock on doors every day, knocking on doors, please buy my cards. And I had to finally Jack, give them away because I said, I'm going to give it to you on consignment and I'll be back in a week. And if you sell them, can you pay me? And if you don't, and that was actually how I was feeding my family for real. And uh, ultimately I'd come back and they'd sell and I'd keep going. And then again, luck had it, as everyone knows the story with the Muhammad Ali robe, met Shelly, and then off we went and then became the largest licensed phone card company in the world. But when we started, Jack, there were only five of us, six of us in the United States. We all knew each other. And AR is extraordinarily similar, but the difference is back then, you had the baby bells, you had Sprint and AT&T, and we were this tiny little company that IPO'd. You're seeing similarities now where you've got Google, you've got Apple, you've got Microsoft in there. We are one of the foremost leading companies in the world of AR these days. And, and that's kind of why, you know, I, I, I thought it would be interesting to bring that up because where phone cards were, which was something nobody even knows about, that industry, basically you, you know, Alan Paul, you, I mean, you were really at the floor, you launched an industry. You were like the- There were about the six of us, of and we, we all knew each other. And the industry hit $6 billion in four years. It was insane, and it was quite a run. So yeah, it, it brings back memories, and we worked with Mickey Mantle before he passed. The Miracon Ice team I worked with personally, I worked with Led Zeppelin. We had some amazing runs with people and putting their license on cards, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League. And when you look at AR, it's all about using visual immersive experiences. And again, like you said, it's very similar, except this is gonna move much faster and it's gonna be much bigger. It already hit AR, you know, 4 billion, where in that case with phone cards back then, it hit 6 billion after four years. This time I expect us, you know, the AR industry to be 40 to 50 billion, certainly in the next number of years. And what we have is, the only pure play out there. We're going to continue to focus on being that AR forefront pure play for the marketplace and to have investors have an opportunity to participate. If they believe in augmented reality, we're the company doing it in the way it's supposed to be done in mobile phones around the world. Okay. So let's, let's kind of bring it back full circle to, to the, to the AR situation right now with imagine AR. Um, what is like right now, what's the big picture? Because I, I think well, it's very important, I think really for investors, again, uh, to understand, uh, you know, when they're getting involved in a, in, a, in a stock like this, which is a new industry, uh, you know, again, it's not a linear thing that it's not, you know, it's, there's not going to be news every day, you know, unless you, <laughs> you're, you're hyping things up. I mean, you, ha you know, basically when you're putting out news, it's basically, it's, it's substantive news. So, and that's how we focus it on Jack. Exactly. We're not going to just sit put on paper because the end we're building something of significance. We announced the slap it on deal that took a year and a half, Jack, a year and a half to close a 300,000 five, five year deal. And I'm on the phone with them, that whole team every week. We are super excited when they launch. I've, I can't discuss anything, but it's super excited by not only their model, but what they have going on and how they're going forward. And that's going to have significant impact on imagining R as well in a very positive way. Okay, so you, you really, what you have is, I think that the key thing is right now, I mean, you have a pipeline of deals. There's a, there's a big pipeline of deals. Uh, you know, you, you've talked about so, some of these things, but the reality is we don't know when, when, 
you know, when something is going to close. We don't have the crystal right. ball. You know, the world of sales is, and with COVID-19, it's done two things. One is it's picked up the interest in AR. Even yesterday, you know, demo after demo after demo. Significant interest in augmented reality like I've never seen before because COVID-19 has really pushed to how do you engage fans, people, consumers remotely and safely and build your community and drive revenue. If you look out at the alternatives in tech, there's not a lot out there. It's social media. Well, that's cluttered. Everyone's posting to it. AR is the one that people are looking at. And the audiences that are calling us, the businesses, the consumers, every, I mean, it's, it's quite a varied uh, different marketplace. I mean, we've had an architecture firm called us. We had the escape room. And then the escape room announcements got more escape rooms called. Like, it's just coming from all different areas. And there's different suggestions of how to use AR. So it's building a lot in the pipeline but ultimately it's getting the decision and COVID-19 has impacted the decisioning timeframe, even if a company wants to go ahead from their internal process to finally execute the paperwork, especially if it's a very, very large organization. So I guess, I guess the takeaway is, you know, it's, it's not a question of if it's just a question of when, you know, these, you know, these revenue deals are going to uh, come in. I would accept that. Uh, so let's, in terms of, you know, the, the big picture right now, where, where does, you know, where does Imagine AR stand? Like at the moment, what does the company have? And, and you know, what, what is it going to look like, you know, let's, let's say six months from now. We're not going to look Absolutely. at, you know, That's a good are going to have, you know, on next uh, Thursday at two o'clock. What is the company going to look like? Let's say January, 2021. I think you're going to see a transformed company. As the industry continues to grow, there's a few areas. Obviously, we have focused on sports and entertainment in a big way. I still expect us to have some significant opportunities and growth in those areas. We're going to expand into other areas that apply into AR through the partnerships we announced, like Engage Nation with casinos. Engage Nation has been very aggressive. They're going to have a major presentation, webcast coming up shortly to a lot of casinos. They are making headway into it. North Highland, 5,000-person worldwide uh, consulting group. They have started to work with us on marketing material, bring us out throughout their entire organization. And we're seeing a lot of strategic opportunities now being presented to us where AR as a platform provider with Imagine AR is a way to integrate into retail programs, into sports engagement programs. As you saw, we were the final 16 in the world for that world football summit, the soccer one. And in that case, we were selected because of our fan engagement. And now we get calls from different firms over in Europe. So it's really gonna see us grow and expand into more of a recurring revenue model where companies and client opportunities are gonna come in, they're gonna license the SDK, they're gonna license the SaaS enterprise. And we also made a move to take our studio.imaginar.com, our free platform, and make it free and enhance it in the next few weeks so anyone could do AR instantly. Everyone who's here listening to you, they create their own AR activations instantly utilizing our platform at studio.imaginar.com. Go to it, have some fun. But we're going to be at a next level, I think, by the time we get to January, we're going to look back at these times and realize this is the time that's going to help pivot this company and launch it into the next significant level. Recurring revenues, high growth, returning clients, a lot of growth, not only in North America, but I expect us to be fully global at that time. You know, I think one, one key thing that to, to keep in mind, you know, for any, any investor looking at this is in terms of sales pipeline, uh, you, know, you know, in terms of all that traction, you know, what happens pretty much in any business, anybody who's ever been involved in any kind of business work, which involves sales or whatever, you know, especially if it's something that's like a brand new type of product, a brand new industry, you know, it, it takes a while for, for some people to kind of get it, the prospects that you don't until they understand what you're doing. But once you show success, once you, you know, you, you have a few, you know, case studies, everybody else falls like dominoes. It's like, and then, you know, like you might have, you know, imagine AR might close, you know, three sports deals. I don't know, uh, you know, uh, next month. And then, you know, by September, you might close 30 deals because, you know, the old those other guys saw what, what they're doing. And, you know, people kind of, you know, look, the reality is that people, you know, we're like lemmings, right? <laughs> we follow, we want to follow what, uh, what everybody else is doing, we want to see. You know, people are competitive, especially in the sports business, obviously. So, 
If, Absolutely. You're right. And that's what happens in specific industries. And let's go to sports. I mean, the Sacramento Kings were ready to launch on March 27th. We were going live with the SDK and then the NBA season got postponed immediately, you know, back then. And then that stopped it. They were going to do a big tech launch March 27th. So it's that SDK first one, that first case study with them didn't proceed. But at the same time, our name has been out there. It's gotten around. We keep getting approached. I'm highly optimistic. I'll, I'll repeat that, Jack. Highly optimistic that Imagine AR is going to have a significant impact in the world of AR with recurring revenues, not only in North America, but around the world. Yeah. And, and you know, in terms of, again, you know, one thing I didn't quite realize before, I just never kind of really sunk in until now I mentioned is, you know, when you're, when you're selling to these sports teams, you know, this, you know, you know this the AR product, the AR solution, um, I think once, you know, one team has it, Everybody else wants to have it because, you know, their fans are going to say, hey, how come the Sacramento Kings has this and we don't? You know, what is – And you will – And those guys are competitive, that. you know, obviously. They are, but they all, are, like I said, are lemmings. And, you know, certainly having the Microsoft partnership has made a big difference as well in terms of the tech, you know, analysis. And we didn't – you know, and that's the other thing, Jack. You know, people think, oh, you're a Microsoft partner. You just sign up and pay for level. No, we actually got through Microsoft where I contacted Steve Guggenheim, whose name is Googs, up in Microsoft, pretty high up. And he actually brought us to the Microsoft HoloLens team. And the business manager at that time who left had us present our entire platform to Microsoft. And they actually fast-tracked us as a partner. We didn't pay them any money. We didn't sign up for a website. They actually personally fast-tracked us to become the partner as the only Azure Cloud AR mobile solution world. And having that has given us a significant advantage when we go out into world and we're marketing, Jack, because now Microsoft has given us, for lack of a word, that good seal of approval. We're Microsoft, we're cloud-based, not only, again, here in North America, but overseas in Europe as well. Uh, Alan, I want to ask you about a couple of things, which uh, you, you have a, a patent position. Um, can you talk <laughs> about the patents, the value of the patents? Yeah, so the patents are something we have stayed very quiet on. We did, we did retain a law firm in the United States that was in a previous uh, MDNA that we retained them to look at monetization strategies. That patent portfolio was of great interest to us. Uh, originally, it was for sale for millions of dollars. And as being a startup, as you know, we didn't have that access to capital. But met, we met the patent owners. We spent a lot of time talking to them, showing them the platform, showing them our business plan, our direction. And ultimately, as you could see in one of our press releases, we acquired a very valuable patent portfolio. It's five specific patents. There was the six, which we reapplied to reinstate. And as well as you know, we have our own patent, which is pending at this point and waiting for approval, hopefully in 2020. It's going to be a very valuable intellectual property portfolio. Specifically, there's one in there that we we're targeting that is actually listed on a website of if investors want to take a look at it, it's the first one on the website and it's related to changing AR storylines based on location and if you read into that and you look at what's going on in the market of AR of how AR is implemented potentially with existing AR vendors and new ones as they're coming you're gonna see the value of those as we go forward the market explodes from 4 billion 50 billion. And I think it's important when you look at a company like ours, a startup, to have that valuable patent portfolio. And those patents, they were patented back in 2012. I don't believe, Jack, in all seriousness, they would ever be a patent today. They would not be given out for the, the, the vastness of them and, and how wide scale they are. And they're good to 2032. So we have a good long time to monetize them. They've got a lot of power in them. And we believe that's going to add a significant opportunity, not only in the organizations we go forward and sell competitively, but in the value of the company and a monetization opportunity as well. What, you know, can you, in, in layman's terms, like what is, you know, what do your patents cover exactly? Like how broad are they and how can you monetize? In other words, when, when can you, you know, force companies to license the, the patent? Well, when you look at the world of patents and we are not looking to be a patent troll we're looking to shore up and protect not only our platform but the areas that we feel confident are growing enormously in the world of AR is looking to protect your position and protect the investors 
And because the value of these we feel are significant, it'll be a part of our sales tool when we go out competition, it's us against another AR vendor, we bring up that portfolio because when we speak to clients, it covers some of the things they're looking at strategically as campaigns for interactivity and engaging fans and consumers around North America. So there are ways to monetize it that everyone's familiar with, with patents. Certainly major companies who could take a look at Imaginary and see, here's a startup company sitting on the CSC. They've got a full working platform. They have a native mode SDK. They got a number of clients. The revenue and recurring revenue opportunities are growing significantly, strategic relationships, and they got a strong patent portfolio that's going to apply to this marketplace as, as it expect exponentially grows in the next few years. It's a perfect opportunity to look at us in a very serious way by the big players. Um, Alan, let's, uh, let me ask you a final question kind of to recap. Like right now, you know, for investors looking at the stock, like what would you say you know, top three reasons why investors should consider uh, Imagine AR right now. Right now, Imagine AR is commercializing its AR platform right now today. It's out in the market. It's completed. We're not doing any R&D. This is not test. And we're bringing client opportunities, strategic relationships to grow this company significantly, not only in North America, but around the world. Second, the patent portfolio, I'll go back to, it has extraordinary value as the market grows. If you believe in AR and you believe the future of AR, same as Steve, you know, back at Tim Cook, I was going to say Steve Jobs going back away, you got me. Tim Cook, when he said AR is going to be in everyone's house, like a mobile phone. And if you believe in that, we are a mobile AR provider that will be providing AR engagement, immersive experiences around the globe both for phones and as headsets come out and the Apple glasses come out, we'll be positioned ready to take advantage of that as well. And third, if you truly believe that the entrepreneurial team of Imagine AR that's out there building and the strategic relationships who have demonstrated you know, success in their marketplaces, both in the past and the future, because at the end of the day, you gotta believe in the manager that they're here working every day and focus on delivering value, then you go ahead and you look at Imagine AR as still the only pure play AR vendor out there. As I've explained, we don't have any other business units, no other revenue stream. We are focused on building this platform. And when the warrants came in now, we are fueled up, we're ready to roll. And I expect this company to do some amazing things in the world and really impact consumers and fans worldwide with mobile AR. Al, on that note, I want to thank you, and uh, we look forward to having you back on the next Superstock live stream uh, in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. A, a pleasure again, and, and I thank you. And I will give out a shout out to my wife and her patients these days, because I think, you know, I normally work 80 to 100 hours a week, but certainly this week has been an overtime week. Uh, so I thank her. I'll give a public shout out to her. And certainly, our investors have been wonderful. And I just want to say that as well, even during this past week, many heartwarming, nice messages, vote of confidence from long-term investors, truly believing in what we do. They're along for the journey. They're not expecting this to be a one day, one week, one week turnaround. And they're seeing what we put together. And I want to personally thank a lot of the investors who reach out by phone. They've sent me emails, calls, messages. Truly appreciate it. I thank you. And as I said, we're going to the top of the hill and we're going to go together. And I always say, there's always a lot of battles to fight, but at the end of the day, it's about winning the war. And we plan on being the one at the top when we get done.